Do that probably every day, close to. Just really fire, give him a cue. Again, talk about blurring the vision. We'll give him a cue. So we're in. So we're gonna do the we do the shuffle redirect first, you know what I mean? We give the bag just to emphasize stay off the line. You know what I mean? Yep, so we're gonna shuffle when I turn. Great. Direct. And then we'll also do both those where now you come downhill, shimmy the bag. Just shuffle this up. You got a footwork? Yep. Every single practice. You know what? What I'll have you do is face me with your heels and back that back. Obviously, we put the bag there, create no false steps. And we do this with our old players, we do it with our young players. It's really good for your freshmen. Every drill you can, we like to put an agile behind them. That way you can, you can simulate that false step. If you false step, you're going to kick the bag as soon as your drill's over. Always look back and see if you false step. So we talked about the exact same thing, leaning forward. We are a little pigeon-toed, staying balanced. We always like to have our hands active up off our legs because if you're on your legs, you'll push off no matter what. Same thing if you're grabbing your drill. The natural reaction is to push up. So we like to have our hands active and we're staying low. All we do, we do this two different ways. The easiest way is I'll just be the back. And so all it is is I'll start, you'll be in a position, and I'll step one way or the other. And all I want you to do is take a downhill angle step. And we're talking about six inch short steps. So when I step downhill, the most important thing is I keep my base. I don't want to get too wide, and I also don't want to get too narrow. So I'm going to be here. I'm just going to step down, get downhill, stay square, hip square, chest square. Easy enough? This is yours working off There we go. Good. And I really want to emphasize that first step should be downhill. A lot of guys, that natural reaction is to step lateral. No, you're good. You're good. So I really want to emphasize that first step should always be downhill, and then I'm gathering myself, keeping my base, and then your uh, hips and shoulders should stay square. So one more time, we'll go the opposite way. Hit. Good, stay square. Great, great job. Now the other way we change this up, we talked about that yo tight end. So what me and coach will do is I'll be the back and he'll be an offset tight end. And so this is just one of those things where you got to see the split zone. So there's two ways we can run this. If I'm the back and he's the tight end, we can stay front side and you're going to work down here. Or I can tell coach you're splitting back across, which you'll do right here, and I'll step. And all you need to do is take one step and angle back to that other point. That makes sense. So let's just pretend that coach is. Awesome. So you'll see the split zone action. So hit, hit, you'll take one step good and then work back across. Same exact principle, staying square. The only other change ups we have to this, we'll take that first step and we call it a misstep. So we'll say the back will start one way or the other. I'll step, you'll get down a hill to that cone and then shuffle square across. Never click in our heels. We always want to keep a good base. Staying square in the last one. Does that make sense? So we'll do that one time. So you'll get downhill just like step one and you'll shuffle back across. Yes, sir. Hey. Way to the count. Said hit. Good. Staying square. Good. Great base. We go to uh, block construction. So we try to hit kind of the phase of a play. This is what we try to do when we go through our indie. So phase of the play, right? Key read, whatever drill you might do, footwork, block construction, tackling, and or coverage. You know, that's the phase of the play. So here you can get on our knees. Buddy. So the first one. And this is this is day one stuff. We'll do this. We'll do this throughout the summer. So we don't the camp. The first one is just gonna camp place, but we're talking about hairline on chest. So you gotta be lower. You gotta have your hips down. So when when DJ is gonna hit me here, I'm gonna say hit. He's gonna he's gonna strike me. Hand placement, okay? Hairline on chin. Okay? And then, so we'll hit that a couple times, right? We might do a fast fire. Just, working our hands, we might just sit here, okay, get, get back down like this, and then we'll add things to it. So we'll talk about the quick swipe. And again, all this is from the knees, day one stuff. So the quick swipe is I'm gonna offset just a slight bit. This is my gap over here. He's got me a little bit, a little bit. When he has you a little bit, we're talking about just a quick swipe. So I'm here, quick swiping, and we'll fall down. And then we'll go to the other side. 
And then we talk about um, punching white. So now he's definitely got me. He's out there with me big time. So now I'll actually move my knee here. I'm going to stagger from here. And then I'm going to put my arm over here quick and wipe him. White box. So here, go go quick swipe first. Okay. And so that's the quick swipe. Now I really have him. Now he's gonna have to move his knee. He's got to punch and wipe me now. Hit. And to be honest, we'll we'll also go phase right where on the on the wipe anyway. We'll go hit. We're here. We'll hold it for a second, and then we'll wipe. So you can break it down as much as you guys are willing, like as, much, as fast as you guys are picking it up, you can break it down. Um, we don't have any pop-ups. So here on, a, we call this the dip and rip. So now you're beating somebody and you're dipping and ripping. So we'll, usually we use pop-ups, they're not out here, but we'll shuffle to the pop-up, we'll dip and rip. When you don't have pop-ups, you just use a line where you want to step to clear, same foot inside here, grab and grasp, rip it, reset on the line, reset. You need to pick it up. Just use the line, clear the line, get rid of it. And then we obviously have the video up there that shows guys. The philosophy that it's just all activation to begin with. So what we'll do, we'll get on a sled too, and we'll start with six-point explosion. Just get your. Now that we have our feet ready to go, now I got my hips and hands ready to go. So you're starting on six points, you're down all the way. Yep. So here, obviously, we don't have a sled, and we won't have kids or anything like that. But we'll be about six inches from the sled, and we have one that's built into both our outdoor and our indoor. That's on the the deal, so you can. It's a proper height. But when we talk about six-point explosion, and you just did it, the most important thing I think in coaching the six-point explosion is a lot of guys have their feet out, right, flat against the ground, and they're trying to push off their toes. We talk about curling our toes under. It's the first point of contact, no matter what. Your toes are always your first point of contact. So then you'll load back. You can have, yep, just like that. Yep. Up, and all I have is just a six-inch power punch against a sled. So I'm all the way back down, and we do three hits. Then we get to a four point where you're sitting up. Now it's more hip activation, so I want to really roll my hips. If I'm in a four point, I can sit back on my heels ready to go so I can overemphasize those hips coming through the same time as my hands. Then we'll stand up on the sled. We'll go head up. We'll work both sides of it. Just a shuffle step again, staying square as possible. Shuffle step downhill. Hit the, uh, hit the sled from either way, and then we'll go one, three, five. By that time, our feet should be ready to go, hands ready to go, hips ready to go. So that's our, kind of our block of structure. All right, so then, like I said, so now moving to coverage and then tackle. So coverage wise, coming down here. Uh, here in your stamps, okay, we teach our guys to skate. Um, Unless we're in our cover two on our boundary, sometimes we'll ask the wheels to backpedal. But skate, for the most part, is, is what we ask most of our guys to do. So he's going to be here, he's going to step in place, he's going to skate. I'm going to break him. When I break him, he's going to snap his line, his eyes, that next point, come to balance, okay, reset, he's going to skate, and he's going to catch a ball. It's, it's basically a linebacker version of the W drill that you see uh, DBs do. Bottom of the numbers, bud. Yes, sir. So let's say uh, now he's going to work with the quarterback to reposition himself as if you were the quarterback that down that side with his feet. You know, you guys really want to do this side swing, but he doesn't have that. Skate that way, and we'll work more break. So what we do here is we try to train our guys. As soon as that hand comes off the ball, you're breaking in whatever direction he is. So you got to find your, you know, whether you're a curl flat player, you're a hook curl in the curl, or the dig, maybe backside. So when we say hit, hold on, when we say hit, he's skating, I'm working. If I work this way, he's going to slide slightly. But when my hand comes off the ball, he's actually going to turn and break. Or 
hit here. I'm looking here at the dig. He's going to squeeze this way. When my hand comes off the ball, he'll break. So that's our skate one. And we haven't done this since the mic. Okay? We don't have it, you guys. Uh, so I, I have the guy here. But to be honest, high school kids love this one. That's why I started doing it. Well, I'll have like a pop up for a guy. You'd have your players in front pop ups about four yards away. And we got hot feet. We got hot feet. And all we're doing is I'm going to come off the ball. My hand comes off the ball. I'm going to break. So I'd have a guy here or pop up. Yeah, I'll help here, pop up. I'm right here uh, inside, like I'm the quarterback, right linebacker. Okay, my hand comes off the ball. My shoulder's pointed here. I'm going to break. And what it does is it, it uh, initiates the contested catch. You know what I mean? Like, you're going to, when that ball's in the air and I break, I can keep, you know, fight this guy off. So, High school guys, really like that. Sometimes I'll put a crash pad out there so they can get some diving balls, you know what I mean? Things like that. Uh, we don't have any of that out here to demonstrate it, but I really thought that high school guys loved it. And it, it taught them to break up. You got any coverage? Yep. So I'm not going to bore you. We're a spot drop team in our cover three, and all we talk about is pull to 14 yards on the hash for your two outside linebackers and then a hole drop in the middle. So I'm going to bore you with that. We will run, we'll, we'll spot drop everybody, shuffle them either way. We also do a curl drill where you'll be five yards away from where you're dropping. So go ahead and start on that five yards out. Yep, yeah, square up. So all we'll have a guy do is just run out here and you'll be dropping on an angle. We'll usually put a cone and that guy sets up at about 10 to 12. And he'll come move out and then he'll just pat, right? Because that curl route's not going to stay stationary. He's going to move a little bit. So we'll, you guys have a lot of fun with that, you know, being wide outs and messing with their boys. Now the other, the other drill, and this can be an outside linebacker, it could be our free safety, it could be a cloud corner. We always talk about a buzz sift, and that's the flat player. So you have your hook curls, you have your hole player. If you start right here, we'll pretend that this is the hash, right? Field's over here, boundary's over here. So what I'll do is I'll put a guy out right at the bottom of the numbers, even with the line of scrimmage, and I'll put a guy out 15 yards. And we talk about a buzz sift, and for us, a buzz sift is we want to get out to the bottom of the numbers, we buzz the numbers, bottom of the numbers, then open up flat, being able to play 15 yard corner run, right? And so what I see a lot of people do wrong, you know, in coaching this, is they'll, they'll get out to the bottom of the numbers, right? They'll both flat, eyes back, chin back. And what they'll do is they'll take that angle, right, back here. Remember, this is the field, right? Where I'm coming back to the field. We talk about getting to the sideline, right? Because that quarterback's throw is going where? To the sideline. So when we open up, when we buzz through the numbers and then we sift, we want to sift with our, with our outside pack aim towards that sideline because I can always break back this way, right? Quarterbacks in here, I can always break back. What I can't do is if I open up the wrong way to the quarterback, right, and I'm sifting back in, I can't get that ball back over my head. So that's a huge coaching point for us. As soon as we close through the numbers, we'll sift with that outside shoulder to the sideline. So I'll just show you that real quick. All you're going to do is drop on an angle, open back up to us flat. And we talk about taking a peek as well, and this goes for our hook curl drops and everything. Take a peek, it's a picture, not a movie, is how we say it. Take a peek, get our eyes back, chin on that front shoulder. So we'll just close out to the numbers. As soon as we get to the bottom of the numbers, we'll open up with that sift arm back to the sideline looking at the quarterback. So we'll just do that one time. And the reason I put the guy at the five and the guy at the corner route is I'll sit there and I'll just open up one way or another. Now i got to break back down to the flat route, the swing route by the quarter, or the uh, running back, or that seven route. I'll open back up that way. Okay? I'll, I'll break it back down. There we go. Set. Hit. Flat. Good. Now open up. Good. And get that shoulder good. And now pump it back down here. Good work. As simple as that. Okay. Uh, first thing we do with our entire team, really, is offensive guys play special team. We talk about if you can see his numbers, you can't see his numbers. And we talk about uh, putting big surf. So first of all, same foot, same shoulder. Uh, knee over the toe to create power, like chin angles, things like that. And then, and then lastly, if you can see his numbers, you can't see his numbers. So here I can see his numbers. So he'll start here. So I am tracking this near hip. That's what I'm tracking to prevent cutbacks, things like that. When I come, we talk about foot timing. So I'm going to time my feet up, get the big surface of my body on here, my knees over my toe. I'm aiming for his hip flexor. All humans bend at the hip flexor. 
okay? So I'm putting the big surface on my body, and we'll just give him a hit, okay? Then he'll face this way. Actually, face me first. So face me first. So if this is my leverage side, I can still see his numbers, right? But now it's a right foot, shoulder, big surface, because I can still see his numbers. Then, if I can't see his numbers, now we talk about head behind, gator roll. So now I'm here, head behind, and I get ready to gator roll. So what we'll do with our guys is, we'll start with just one step. So I'm here, tracking this deal. One step tells me I'm here, okay? Then, as they get better, we'll kind of jog into it. So I'm, I'm here, jogging into it. I'm a foot time. See, so I check my feet there to get that same foot. We call foot timing, check your feet. Okay, if he's facing this way, same thing, I'm here. I'm a foot time to get the same foot, same shoulder that goes power on. So that's, that's step one, okay? Then, as they get more comfortable, you can walk into it, you can jog into it, you can sprint into it. And what we've gotten into is the pop-up. So if you guys have pop-ups, they can, they can fully uncoil on that. You know what I mean? If you're trying to save bodies, because I get that. If trying to save bodies, they can, they can uncoil in the pop-up deal. So that's, that's the initial uh, to teach them big surface of the body on the ball carrier, tracking near foot, or excuse me, near hip, same foot, same shoulder. That makes sense? And we did the deal, you know, the Seahawks, we started with this deal. I can see his numbers, near foot, near shoulder. Our guys, we missed a lot of tackles last year, to be honest. So that's why we went to big surface of the body. The more surface on the ball carrier, the better are you going to get him back. Okay. Um, and then, come over here. Fine. So you start a yard behind the barrel. I'd have a cone here usually. He's head up me. You know this. So, <clears throat> you're the tackle. You're the tackle. So, we're going to clear the barrels. When he clears the barrels, he's going to go downhill. Ball carrier changes your angles. Okay, so if I'm the ball carrier, I'm going to go here. He's coming. He's going to work downhill. He is closing space. I might keep turning up. That's fine. He can't see my numbers. It's a ramp and roll. Okay. We're here. He's downhill. I'm going to try to cut back. You can see my numbers now in the big surface part. You know what I'm saying? You with me? So, and we've done this a couple different ways. First, you know, we can start with body on body, right, where he just kind of thuds me up. We put a bag out there uh, where if I keep going, he's going to wrap and roll that bag as I run past it. Um, and then obviously anytime it's a cutback, it's going to be collision. So here, we're clearing the barrels, we're going to go full speed drink. So here, typically I'd put a cone out there to, to give, like right where Coach is, to give an idea of whether he's turning up or cutting back. So I'm going to sprint to that cone. He's coming down here. If I cut back, collision, I keep going. Um, for resistance tactics. Wow. Sumo drill, you set up two cones, two cones, stay inside these two cones. His, he's the tackler. His back's to mine. On set hit, we're both going to pick one of these. He's going to pick one of those two cones. I'm going to pick one of these two cones on the ball carrier. We're here. We're coming around. Now he has to see. And he's put the, the well, place up. Sumo drill. He has to drive him out of the suit. Can't let me smoke. That's the sumo drill. Okay, now the space drill now, again, so I'm going to have four cones. I've got one, two, three, four, working up to this line that I start on. He's got four cones, start behind that cone there. He gets to choose any of those four cones. Set, hit, he's going to choose the cone, I'm going to choose the cone. I'm going to be here. Boom, I'm getting vertical right now. So now it's track. Does that make sense? So that's, that's, our, that's our big space drill. So you can see we work from no space, little space, big space. We try to progress. You got any tackling groups? Yeah. So our, well, our tackling group, really we do with our whole team. Like you said, everybody on our team has to tackle. We have more offensive people than defensive people on special teams. It's just how it is. Other places, you'll have a ton of defensive people. Us, we have a lot of running backs, tight ends playing. So what we'll do as a whole team, and this is right out of stretch, it's a whole team activity, and we'll work in between the numbers and the hash. 
So what we'll have is, Coach, if you just stand here, this will just simulate you getting a bubble pass, right? And you'll be the runner. So what we'll have is 15 yards back. We call this the three blind mice. And a lot of the Patriots have done this. The Seahawks have done this. So I'll be 15 yards back, and I'm a lead guy. I also have two tacklers at 20 yards back, right? So I'll do an up down. You're getting a bubble pass, and you're running this way, right? I'm going to pick a side. As soon as I have leverage, I'll near step, flash off the hip. You keep running, right? Then whichever way you decide, I'm not going to make you run everything, but let's say you decide this way, right? Now he's using his leverage on the sideline, right? And he's going to go tag off your hip. And I'm coming from behind, and i got to take a good angle, right? i got to angle, come back off your hip. That's just something we rotate through. We do four minutes. Everybody, I mean, D-linemen, offensive linemen, we get fun with it, right? Everybody's catching the ball. Offensive guys coming back and tackling. But we just call that our three blind mice, and that's been really, really successful. One other thing, and I know we mentioned it earlier, with pullers and stuff like that, as soon as we're done with our tackle drill, what we'll do is we'll just get in the box. And so we'll take three scout guys, and those guys are the middle for the Mike linebacker. So we'll be centering two guards. Then we'll have our outside linebackers both on the outside. We got three guys, so we can roll through it, you know, coaching. But we'll have two guys over here and two guys over here, and you'll be the linebacker, right? And it's always a pull drill. I can run zone with these three guys, right? You're just an A-gap fitter. We're just working our stack fits. But then I'll obviously do pull, or we're down on the nose guard, pull back around. And it's just something that you can get your guys through. And all we do is just rotate the line. The bikes stay in the same line, the Sam stay in the same line, and the wheels. But it just gets you to progress to see, like I talked about first, what's my first primary read? Am I getting pulled? And that's just something we go through probably two, three minutes. An individual, obviously, an individual is sacred, as coach would tell you here in college, but we'll roll through that in about two minutes. A really good drill to see pullers get used to that. And then, so that's that's kind of the main deal. So we'll do a ton of run fits with uh, the the uh, picture changer, like I said. We we'll do a ton of that with barrels. Uh, and then, if you, depending on what your linebackers do, we have them set the front. So like, maybe you have enough guys where you can have an O line or even just a guard center guard. The backers will set the front with the barrels. They'll move the barrels, whether it's a three technique or a nose, things like that. And then we'll do run fits that way. Um, we'll take on pullers that way. Um, we'll grab those uh, hand shields and tackle blocks down. You work on the, the hug and spill, like I talked about. Um, you know, uh, anytime you can steal time, whether it's pre practice or in, in, even if it's five minutes of your indie, I think that is so beneficial when you talk about that. Okay, getting guys triggered fast, knowing what to do in the run game. Um, and actually, another type of drill we do that I really like is the sideline tackle. We don't want to talk about the So now we add two things. So we're working the skate, we're working the break. Like he's talking about the ball. I'll stay the linebacker, break. When he crosses that line, this guy has a choice. He can run this way. If you can see my numbers, it's going to be a left center tackle. Or when he crosses that line, I might try to cut it back, and he's absolutely crossing my face because he can see the line. So you skate, break, and when he crosses the line, that ball carrier can decide it's going to go. That's a good bubble deal. I'm sure you guys see a lot of bubble. I know we do. Pop up. We have three pop ups in a triangle. I'm the ball carrier. He's the linebacker. He's, line He's going to shuffle. When he shuffles in front of those three pop ups, I'm going to decide which side the pop is going to pop out on. So he has to see through the line. Now, when I play backer, we talk about hairline on chin. If I'm taking on a block, no, I was short. So to be honest, I, I did the cheat code. During the warm-ups, during the warm-ups, I would see what the uh, running back was wearing. You know, sometimes they got the, the wristband or the, the spat. I'd have to look at the, the legs, to be honest with you. I don't know because I was short. Uh, but uh, anyway, but at the end of the day, what he's talking about is the pop-ups, you, you gotta blur your vision to see where he's gonna come from those bags, you know what I mean? Um what else you got, coach? Yeah. I was with Lovey Smith for four years. He coached a lot of good linebackers. He said, if you ever have time in individual linebackers, run the key drill, like Coach was talking about. Get a line out there if you have enough guys. See pulls, see OY, see double counter. It's good to see zone fits sometimes. You know, pull the ball on some guys that are, 
you know, we work a surf technique because a lot of our guys get on edges, you know, just surfing, staying square, being able to play back, you know, on the quarterback. It's good for your defensive lineman in the four down, but key drill, key drill, key drill. And then we do, we'll do route combinations, stuff like that. I mean, you can never have enough time. Something I didn't mention when he was scraping, uh, that especially with young guys, when you scrape, everyone wants to turn. But he's talking about it's so important when you're a linebacker to have your shoulders square. So if you can learn to run with your shoulders square, the change of direction is going to be better and your ability to take on blocks, and that's going to be better. So it's, it's when, whenever you do scraping, make sure their shoulders are as square as they possibly can be. I like to stand away from them. So if they're scraping this way, I'll stand at the corner, have them look at me while they're scraping. So because your eyes, right, forces your body to torque a little bit. Um, uh, you guys have any questions? Kind of glitched through that thing. Um, and obviously with him, yeah. You say your heels are at five, so you cheat them up a yard and we'll kind of stagger that heel. You know, you him, and you're pushing off that back foot and going. We'll work that, we'll work that with the boot so they can bend some more. Um, is there any particular stance you want your linebackers in when they blitz? I mean, I know, like, the, 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 the worst habit is, you know, them kind of being mm -hmm. here. So, like, so great, great question. So, if you're back, you're off the line. Don't have a blitz. I would slightly stagger it. If I'm blitzing this way, I'm pushing off this foot. Slight stagger. Something they can't pick up. Push. And then, if you have if you have a blitz where the guys are on the line, we call it a race stance. Knees over the toe. Okay, don't do this deal. Pushing off this front foot. That makes sense. Um, so it just depends on what kind of blitz you are. Are you showing a blitz demeanor or not? And whatever defense you're running. Um, but like I said, when you're back, try not to show it. You try to cheat up just a little bit, and then you got to get your own timer or whatever. Whoever you're playing with, clapping or whatever else, you always work the timer in those, in those uh, drills you're doing with the blitz technique. Um, if it's cadence, white age, white age, whatever it might be. A good, uh, a good blitz drill we do. It's, you know, we'll have a tight end down there with the pad. And if we call it a D crash and a sky crash. And all that means is our sky crash is a contained blitz, our D crash is always a spill guy. So we'll have a tight end there and we'll also have a guard where, where he's standing. He'll have a, a pad too. So the other two, like you said, we'll always work on that edge. You know, there's a lot of times that we're nine techniques and you can see when we're blitzing at times that we mess around, we do a good job of moving in and out, different stances. But all we'll do is have that tight end with the bag. He'll either step down or step out us, right? And then we gotta take the inside footwork, not fall stepping spill a tight end if he's down what we'll do is we'll have that puller because our guys struggle really bad that i'd say that's probably our, our worst habit you know as linebackers is either getting that split zone at us and i'm a d crash player i'm a spill player or that guards pulling so we'll work both we'll put garbage cans there where he's a tight end coming back at me just working the, those foot those uh that footwork right and then getting our eyes in. that's the most important thing seeing if that guard's pulling because i don't want to take too many steps assuming that guy's you know pulling and then he doesn't pull and i ran past the measurement so we always talk about you know, your first two steps. Don't fall step, eyes up, measure. So we'll just work that a bunch of different ways. Tight end out, us tight end down, pullers, splits, and then working the match. So that being said, like what he's saying, if I'm on the line and I know I have the ability that if that, that tackle blocks out, I can come in, my inside foot's going to be up. Why? Because I go here, and then it's a natural deal. This is my feet from the other way, I got to go here, here. You know what I'm saying? Now, if I'm just an edge, then I'll go this way. Because now it's one, two, three on the dip. You want the inside foot up. You know what I mean? So, so depending on what the blitz is and what I'm able to do as a linebacker, if I have the ability to come in, my feet are going to be a certain way. If I don't, my feet are going to be a certain way. And just going further into that, too, we talk about that toe at the hip of the tackle or the hip of the tight end, right? Because I don't want it. A lot of guys are here in a stance, but that back foot and that front foot are more upfield, right? So what are you going to do naturally? You're going to step upfield before you come back under. So we always have that inside. Like he's saying, if tight end's here and I'm blitzing back inside, I have my back, my outside foot, right, back, and I always have that toe pointed at the hip of the tackle. Because I'm going that way regardless, right? If the tight end's out of me, I'm still going underneath. If he's down, I want to get as flat as possible. So go ahead, point your toe again. It's probably going to give away that you're 
you're blitzing, but there's a lot of ways of making you know up for that too. But always point that toe that way. My first step is going that way regardless. If that tight end's out, you're taking a good angle up in the, under him. If he's down, I'm flat off the ground. Another uh, here. This is something. So I used to work with NFL guys for a pro day and things like that. So we work this drill. But it's here, you're downhill, kind of like his drill. You're downhill at an angle. Okay, you're shuffling, and then oh shit, it's pass. I'm gonna flip, and I give them a landmark. I throw a cone out there. I give them a landmark to get to before you get your eyes back. Because at the end of the day, on the mechanic drop when you flip, you gotta go find your threat. You gotta find that over or whatever it might be. So I'll flip. I get to my landmark, now I look back and pause. We work something similar. We call it a fake out technique, and we get so much power pass and that guard pulling back to the field with the naked behind it. We talk to that first guy, and all he has to do, we're, again, we're a little different with our stack backers. We can get over the top of things pretty quickly. So that's Sam, let's say it's pulling back to the field. I'm the Sam linebacker. All I'm going to do, because I know that Mike linebacker is running through with me because our gaps just changed, so we call it a fake out technique where we just have to take two steps, right? That guard's pulling. Get that guard's eyes because in any power pass situation, he's responsible for the outside guy, right? So all we need him to do is step out at us, and now I can drop, you know, when I had that guard pull outside, and now that Mike's running to be clean. If you don't do that, right, if you stay off the line, now he can pin back, right? And get that Mike linebacker, now you're kind of screwed either way. But we'll work that where we're, we're just the fake out technique, take two steps, get the guard, and now that the coach is talking to climb to the over or something. You know, at that mid-range level. Uh, another thing that's beneficial is uh, talking about really any tackling drill, but especially that first one I talked about where we're tying our feet up with the same foot, same shoulder. Have that guy hold the ball. Okay. So I'm here, and then when you tackle somebody, when I foot time it, I'm going to come in with my left foot up, left shoulder. This is my wrap hand. Always have somebody pump, whether they get it or not. But just that, on that, that repetition of punch while you tackle, it's big time. I mean, you can see guys in the National Football League get incentives for fumbles. If you ever watch, pay attention. They're tackling, but they're punching the same time they tackle. Anytime you can add a ball to a tackling drill to create that that punch while you tackle, is going to be beneficial. Four years, I listened to Lovey Smith talk about peanut tillman. Yeah. And peanut punch. But another way, obviously, everybody's probably ran the drill, but we start out our takeaway circuit with a club punch grip, right? So he's got the ball running, and I can, you know, grip the thumb. That's another good point, too, that I hadn't heard before. You know, if, if you're a ball carrier, right, and you're holding on to a ball, if I grab that thumb, and I guess it's a little clinic talk sometimes, too, but if I can get a hold of that thumb, now you have no power, right? You, have, you cannot hold on to a ball if you don't have the thumb. You try to prefer it. So that's something that will work, you know. That's your rip technique. I can come out, we'll have that guy flail his arm out a little bit, punch, just something real quick. And again, it's a two minute drill. Everyone run through it. And then the other thing too, when I'm clearing my feet, when I'm getting that fumble right, I punch it out. Now I don't want to run downhill right and kick the ball. So we talk about as soon as you get your CPR, whichever one it is, and that ball's out here, right? I want to clear my feet, scoop. That way I don't kick that ball. Because how many times have we seen the ball on the ground? Guy goes to get it and kicks it instead of that recovering it. So clearing your feet. Your Another little caveat is anytime you can work their legs and their bends, whether it's tackling, uh, coming out of the chute, or you have tags under the chute, or anything like that, I think is beneficial. Uh, anytime you can work their, their ability to pick up their feet and bend at the same time, it helps. Like like just doing that every day, if you're going to see bend in the play. You know what I mean? So anytime you can have bags on the chute, Anything else, fellas?